Hey, deserving listeners, it's time to continue our journey of watching 90 Day Fiance. By the way, if you haven't become a patron of the podcast yet and you're thinking about it, this would be a great time to do that. You can go to patreon.com, become a patron. Let's get to the show. Why'd you do that? Because your mom cooperates on me and Rorisa. And from I'm talking about Fast Horse and I mean, she all the time last night. I guess I, maybe I scared her talking about kids and moving here. But you talk about kids. Yeah. So I talk about either if you're a mom. I guess she thinks so, it's your idea, maybe. I don't know. All right, come on, folks. You continue, baby boy. I'm not a baby boy. Don't demoralize me like that. So this is an exact replica of earlier interactions with Jess and with Larissa. I don't know if I'm seeing it accurately, but what I see, what I think I see is that for Colt, instead of dealing with this in a way that will actually help everyone get along, he inadvertently deals with it in a way that actually makes it worse. The way that he deals with it is he enters into the conversation of essentially with the message of, you created the conflict with my mom and you need to not do that. You need to stop that. You need to mind your behavior and it was all your fault. He's not saying that super directly, but it is essentially what he's saying. That's not going to make someone feel good. It's going to make them feel like, wait, it was all my fault and you're not in my corner. That hurts my feelings. And then for both Jess and Larissa, instead of stating it that way, instead of saying, hey, I feel like you're discounting me it hurts my feelings. I feel like you're just blaming me. Are, are you telling me like I was completely to blame for that? I, I don't think I was. Instead of the partners communicating in a way that is from their baseline feelings, they come back with, you're a mama's boy and just insult him just because they're hurt and they transform that hurt into anger and they transform that anger into hostility and then they just call him a name. And then he always says, hey, you need to respect me. That's not respectful. Okay, we're just we're just right back in the pattern of him discounting feelings, them getting hurt, them insulting him with a na- with name calling, literally. Him trying to put an end to the, he's hurt. He, you know, she calls him a name. He gets hurt. He gets angry. He transforms that into hostility, and his version of hostility is essentially talking down to people and being controlling and paternal. So let's rewatch that and take note of that. I guess she thinks it's your idea, maybe. I don't know. All right, come on, folks. You continue, babe boy. I'm not a baby boy. Don't demoralize me like that. I'm a man. I was married. Mm-hmm. I pay my own bills. I do my own thing. Who doesn't have his own opinion? Debbie compare me ladies all the time and quote, no defend me, no talk nothing. It's not okay for me because I'm very independent, so. You're a daddy's girl. I thought you are. Yikes. <laughs> so uh, now he's just calling her names too. This is fantastic. And if they just had a couple's therapists, they would say, whoa, 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 whoa. Do you really want to just call each other names? Or do you want to actually work on this relationship? Your choice. I've had conversations. Couples can get really rigid about the way that they yell at each other and the way that they insult each other. They both probably came from families where name calling was the norm and that it's okay to do that when it's not okay to name call. And I will try, you know, they employ me to help them reduce their conflict. And then as I'm trying to help them, they might ignore me and continue to fight. And there's various different ways of dealing with that as a couples therapist. But some of the time I'll just say, whoa, 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 you can either continue to have this fight in the style that you like and continue to have what you have, which is why you ended up in my office to begin with, or we can try something different. Which one do you want to do? And then I just leave it up to them. Um, now at that point, I'm frustrated. I'm, I've sort of reached my limit. I've tried a lot of things to smooth things over. I tried a lot of things to get some control over the session. Uh, nothing works. They continue to dig in and I calculate that. Well, in order for 
this to work therapy wise, I've, I've got to drop a bomb. And one of the ways that I can drop a bomb is to just be like, look, your choice, either you get on board with my recommendations, at least here in the session, or you, you're free to have your conflict and ruin your marriage in the pro, you know, I don't say it those words, but essentially the message I'm giving. And that's what I'm compelled to do with the two of them. You, you know, it's just like, okay, you can continue to call each other names and hurt each other and, and, and be unfair. And we all know where that's going to go is you're going to end up in more conflict and hate each other. And then where, where'd you get, or you can try a different way of communicating. Let's slow down and let's work our way backward. Okay. There's a name calling. Then we have below that is just general host, hostile intent. Below that is anger. And below that is hurt or fear. Tell me about the hurt and the fear. Communicate that. You're entitled to communicate that. You're not entitled to call someone a name. So, yikes. Hey, deserving listeners, as you know, I'm constantly recommending that people go to therapy. We all need therapy from time to time. One of the options available that is definitely worth checking out is betterhelp.com. So if you're looking for a therapist, I would give it a try by going to betterhelp.com slash Kirk. Make sure you use the slash Kirk because you get 10% off your first month and it helps us out. I get a lot of emails from you saying that you're looking for a therapist. As you watch these videos, I know many of you have been motivated to find your own therapist, but I know it can be really hard to find a good one to work with. Like I said, one of the options available to try is betterhelp.com slash Kirk. And you should know that this service is available to clients worldwide, which is amazing. I've been told that you can start communicating with your therapist in under 24 hours. You can message with your counselor anytime. Plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. And I've been told that it's often less expensive than in-person therapy. So go to betterhelp.com slash Kirk to get 10% off your first month of therapy today. Oh. If your father doesn't like me and then you said it's over. That's a daddy's girl. Yeah, because my dad's important for me, and I listen. My to My mother dad. is important to me. Yeah, but I don't live with my dad. Well, if your father I... was sick or needed your help, yeah, would you help him? Mm -hmm. So then, would you let him live with you if he needed it? Okay, so this is a detail that the show just leaves out, edits out, that the mother is sick. I remember there was some just passing reference to that in the first season. And I wonder what that is. I, 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 there was some mention of maybe even she was disabled in some way and she couldn't work. So that'd be interesting to know, right? It's a pretty interesting factor. I don't know though. Oh, it's different. It's not different, Jess. You just don't understand. Without me, my mother would have nobody. So Colt is just continuing his tactic of putting her down, discounting feelings, and just trying to tell her, look, you have to do what I say is kind of the message. And frankly, they're both kind of doing that to each other. He's doing it a lot more. He's definitely more stern and more paternal. And it's interesting to see the pattern just repeat itself over and over and over again. And it makes sense, and that's what people do. But it is, it is an interesting master class in watching people do things that shoot themselves in the foot. What he's trying to do, which is totally okay, is he's trying to say, look, I love my mom. I have a relationship with my mom. She, it, she has an illness. She's disabled. She can't work. She doesn't have really one else in her life. And I care about her. And she's going to be a part of my life. She might not live with us if we get married, but she's important to me. And if you love me, then you need to try to have a good relationship with her. I, I would like you to try to have a good relationship. You can't just write her off. <laughs> because she's a part of my life and I love her and yeah, she's got issues, but so there's nothing wrong with saying something like that. Instead of saying something like that, it is said in this paternal, controlling, put down, arrogant way of you have a problem, you need to stop that. Uh, you know, I'm going to call you a name. You're a daddy's girl too. You know, uh, I'm going to not uh, validate your feelings. I'm going to not care about the way my mom actually treated you and justifiably you were angry about that. It's, it's just interesting because it's like, it's interesting because I see both of these people trying to have a relationship, 
they both seem genuinely like they're trying to have a relationship with each other. And it's tragic for me to watch them make mistakes such that it's almost guaranteed not to work. I guess that's what's happening to me <laughs> as I watch this show with this family in particular is to watch people because because I know as a therapist, as a human, I know that we're all trying to have closeness. We're all trying to have relationships. We're all trying to have love and and bonding and fun and companionship and family. And it's like watching someone who has a broken arm and it hasn't healed yet and they're just flailing their arm around and you're like, stop doing that. I understand. So, I'm not a baby boy. I don't appreciate you keep calling me that. I just feel like you just have to be supportive. Just like I have to be with your dad. Right? What do you want? Dude, I want you to be patient with my mother. We gotta show all our family that we have a real relationship, that you're not using me, I'm not using you. Yeah, because you love me and I love you. I do love you, baby. All right, it wasn't an optimal conversation, but it didn't go horribly as evidenced by the fact that the end of it, they can say they love each other and that they can kiss each other. So uh, they, they must have done something right in there so that it didn't completely fly apart. But it could have been a lot more healthy if they were to validate each other's feelings, to speak from a place of request rather than demand and, and other things. But anyway, so I just want to acknowledge that uh, results are what we look for, outcomes. And so it didn't, it wasn't a disaster. And so there, there's some strength in there that you could build upon. I'm relieved Jess and I were able to resolve our differences because I have a lot of plans for our future. And my mom will just have to understand where this relationship is heading. So Colt seems to think they resolved their differences. I don't think they did. I think they called each other names. I don't think anything's resolved. <laughs> that at least what they showed us on the on the screen. So I wouldn't predict that in the future the conversations are gonna go well. But who knows? We'll find out. I love you, baby. <laughs> All right. Well that does it for that episode in which I react to 90 Day Fiance happily ever after. We're almost done with the Colt and Larissa story. And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.